welcome to the Awakening Podcast Network. Get ready for an inspiring audio from this cutting-edge voice. You can find more podcasts at awakeningpodcasts.com. Hey there, this is a bittersweet moment because this is the last of our series, but it's probably going to be one of the best. I'm going to be talking about wisdom, indispensability. In fact, I did a whole series on that. And so this is just a bite size. It's like an exploding bomb that's going to explode once again in your spirit and a a few other characteristics that you would need to pray about and apply in your life. So stay tuned. Once again, get your notepad, call the family, call your family, call your friends, and make sure you take copious notes. I'm hoping and praying that you're really, really enjoying this series because you are next. Here are some of the qualities you could be praying about, the characteristics that you really need to assume if God is going to be using you in this season and within this generation. Another one of the characteristics that many of the um, history makers have is sagacity. And I threw that word in. I could have used the word wisdom. But I like people to uh, learn new things. And your new word today is sagacity. It has a lot to do with shrewdness and prudence and not just wisdom, but knowing when to apply the wisdom. So a lot of people are wise, but they don't know when to apply it, when it's the most appropriate way of using it, or even being able to reach into uh, life lessons, moments where they might have messed up pull the wisdom out of that, and then use that as an application for their next. But wisdom is very, very powerful. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing, the first thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get an understanding. So when we deal with wisdom, again, it's all about your relationship that you establish with the Holy Spirit. And that's one of the things that I really want you to work on, that level of intimacy, because the Holy Spirit is the purveyor of wisdom. uh, Isaiah 11 and 2 says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. 1 Corinthians 12 and 8 says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge. So the Holy Spirit is actually the purveyor of wisdom. Now, wisdom was used throughout scriptures. Designing the high priest garments was given by wisdom. The architect and the construction of the tabernacle of Moses, um, they were able to accomplish these things from a prophetic blueprint that God gave. But God gave wisdom. Exodus 31, 6 and 11. And I behold, I have given with him Aliab, the son of Bishmach, and of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commended thee. So, you know, if God has given you something to do and your relationship with the Holy Spirit, God is going to make you a sagacious individual or a wise individual. And uh, Exodus 31, 1 to 3, and the Lord spoke, spoke unto Moses saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and brass and in cunning, in the cutting of stones to set them in the carving of timber to work in all manners of workmanship. Listen, they were building something that didn't exist. They couldn't duplicate it. That architectural design came straight from God. And so they went to God and God gave them wisdom. Likewise, with anything that God is calling you to do, ask God, give me a sagacious heart, a sagacious mind. Ask God to give you wisdom. And wisdom can be asked for. James 1 and 5, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God 
that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given. Second Corinthians chapter one, second Chronicles, excuse me, chapter one, verse nine to 12. You know, here you have Solomon, you're presented with Solomon that is negotiating with God and he's asking God, give me the wisdom, show me the protocol for this new uh, assignment that you're giving me. Let me, give me the understanding of governmental protocol. Show me how to move in and move out. He was asking for protocol. He was asking for wisdom. And because he asked for wisdom, the Bible said that God gave him not only wisdom and understanding, but he gave him a largeness of heart. And sometimes we restrict God by our limitations. And in this season, I'm decreeing and declaring God is going to give you largeness of heart. And even as Solomon's wisdom excelled, the Bible said he excelled in in, in wisdom of all the children of the East country and all the wisdom of Egypt. So it shall be with you. You are going to excel in the area of wisdom. I decree and declare, even as Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter one, verse 17 to 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That means the more you know about God, the more intimate you are with God, the more wisdom you have. Here's a simple prayer. Psalm 90 verse 12. We all know it. Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days, the numbering of our days. Teach us to manage our time that we would apply our hearts unto wisdom. So time management is one of the wisest things that you can do because once time goes, it goes forever. So wisdom brings you into realms of wealth, realms of influence, realms of uh, prominence. You could look at Solomon's life because he had wisdom. God gave him wisdom. God gave him knowledge. He prayed about it and it was activated by giving a thousand dollar seed and God gave him the wisdom. But God said, because you ask wisdom and knowledge, not for yourself, but that you might judge people. He said, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto you. I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none king, n- none of the kings have had and have have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. This is um, just fantastic. Second uh, Chronicles chapter one, verse seven to 12. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes 10 and 10 that says this, if the ax is dull and he does not sharpen its edge, then he must exert more strength. Wisdom actually gives you an advantage over your competition and it gives you a competitive advantage because you're not exerting as much mental strength. Your ax head, you're going to keep your mind sharp and wisdom gives you sharpness of mind. So never underestimate the power of wisdom. Wisdom can change every aspect of your life. Proverbs 19 and 8, he who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good. And in this season, only good is going to come unto you. Ecclesiastes 9 and 16 says that wisdom is better than strength. Ecclesiastes 9 and 18 says wisdom is better than weapons of warfare. Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes 7 and 19 says, wisdom strengthens a wise man more than 10 rulers who are in a city. Listen, you can get a confederation of 10 rulers and they could plot and plan, but all God needs to do is give you wisdom and it's better than even the council of 10 great world leaders because you've got the leader of leaders, um, which is God himself. So wisdom is what you need. And at some point, uh, we'll do, do another treatment of wisdom and really pour into you what wisdom is all about. We want you to pray and ask God for wisdom. But at the end of the day, wisdom has our own PR firm and opportunities avail themselves. Wisdom builds her house. She has her own PR firm. Wisdom announces your coming. Wisdom attracts favor. The king's favor is towards a wise servant, but his wrath is against 
um, him that causes shame. So, you know, I'm just building a case that you've got to be able to value wisdom, value it because therein it will change your life, change your trajectory, and you will see the hand of God really elevating you and bringing you into positions of great prominence, influence, as well as great wealth and affluence. Number 21 is uh, they, these individuals had prophetic sensitivity. A reset of the prophetic movement is upon us. The second wave of prophets is rising in this hour. We stand at the edge of a new era in the prophetic. We're gathering the international prophetic community at the Global Prophetic Center a hub for prophetic training, prophetic labs, summits, networks, and lighthouses. It's time for prophets to go deeper. It's time for seers to soar. It's time for prophetic voices to rise up and decree what says the Spirit of God with accuracy that causes the world to pay attention. The Global Prophetic Center offers proven prophetic systems and structures to equip you to walk worthy of your calling and to prophesy with precision, boldness, diplomacy, and wisdom. Get hands-on training and mentoring in a safe environment that breeds true prophetic community and learning. Receive impartation and activation. Sharpen your gift and avoid prophetic pitfalls. Get commissioned. Get networked. Get sent out with the word of the Lord in your mouth and the confidence to release it. Begin your journey today by applying at GlobalPropheticCenter.com. You have gifts. God expects you to use them. If you need training to school your gift, log on to SchoolOfTheSpirit.tv. You'll find training in spiritual warfare, prophetic ministry, prayer, seers ministry, writing, and so much more. Go to schoolofthespirit.tv today. You want to go deeper? Get equipped to overcome and walk in God's purpose for your life at Awakening House of Prayer's online campus. You'll experience an online family, preaching, teaching, and prophetic impartation for victorious living. We have over a thousand members online hungry for what God is saying and doing in the earth. Visit ahop.online today and join our family. Um, Second Chronicles 20 and 20, and they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O, o Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Prosper is having the divine enablement to overcome obstacles that prevent you from succeeding, from progressing, and from you uh, attaining uh, uh, in a position of affluence and influence. And why this is important, because prophecy brings you into the realm of God's glory. And the Bible says, Haggai 2 and 9, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, save the Lord of hosts. And it also brings purpose to existence. It brings divine insight into um, our future destiny as an individual, but also as a corporate, also as a country. And in this season, God is going to raise up strong prophetic voices that is going to speak accurate words, and we're going to know what to do. And you know what? I have an entire course on prophets and prophecy. And those of you that want to find out more about it, you can visit KU um, or uh, kingdomu.com or .org. I think it is kingdomu.net or .org or one of those. And that's Kingdom University or Kingdom School of Ministry, KU. And you can, you can take an entire course on prophets and prophecy. And so when it comes to us really understanding how powerful uh, that, that, that prophetic word is, um, I cannot overemphasize um, just having that level of prophetic um, sensitivity where God will increase you, increase your family, where God will just 
bring you into new levels of an alignment, things that are misaligned. Um, it's going to come as a result of you being in a prophetic flow. And those of you that are part of ministries and you say, well, there is no uh, profit in my ministry. It's all cool because the Bible is a book of prophecies. So if you are reading the word of God, you could take the word of God. You could prophesy the word of God over your life, over your children, over your ministry, over your destiny, over your business, over your trajectory. Just take the word of God. Take the promises of God. Why is that, that important? Because once you work the word, the word will work for you. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the sun of the joint from the marrow and the soul from the spirit. So as long as you are activating the word of God, the word of God will work. It never stops working. You remember the centurion said to Jesus, my servant is sick. And Jesus, uh, he said, but you don't have to come to the house, send the word only. And the word went to work. So we have to understand that prophecy is a part of the DNA of the church. When you look at the church, the church was prophesied by Jesus. And now we are prophetic people. So everything about you responds to prophecy. Number 22 is the whole idea of indispensability. And you make yourself indispensable by adding value, by becoming invaluable. You know, uh, Jacob uh, became invaluable to Laban. Laban wanted to um, keep him and said, I'll pay you anything. Just don't leave me. Uh, the same thing with Pharaoh. Pharaoh uh, discovered that Joseph was invaluable. You can read more about it in Genesis 41, 37 and 46. He, he said, there's nobody else in the kingdom like um, like uh, uh, Joseph. And so being invaluable is so important. And then there are some other characteristics that I want to throw out at you. Um, and that is giftings. Um, you paying attention to the area of your gifting, and we're going to do an entire treatment of that. There is also resilience and there is also innovation. And we're going to do treatment of each one of these. One of the things that I learned from innovation is this, that a lot of people look and they complain about what is not rather than create the reality that they want. Innovation is the art of seeing a better and more efficient tomorrow. In innovation takes you into the prophetic realm. E.H. Uh, e. Uh, Lindley, he was the chancellor of Kansas City University, he said, we're in the midst of a revolution and we are never going to be the same again. We have been riding in a vehicle of social thinking that is 100 years old and we have to change. The community and nations are new frontiers where people are finding new ways to live together for the good of all. Our children, we hope, as they face the future, will develop the spirit of the old pioneers who are not afraid of new problems. I have respect for all kinds of engineers, but the greatest today are social engineers. And this was a statement that was made over 100 years ago. And today, where I stand, what I see in my vision, in my dreams, I see a world filled with dreamers and innovators and visionaries who move humanity forward and who influence others to do the same. That's from where I stand. And I see it. I see it in, uh, for this generation and generations to come should the Lord delay his coming. The entire world has been wheeled into a divine maternity ward. Secular industries are, birth, uh, are birthing out the new, new ways of living, new ways of working. And even though the body of Christ is lagging behind, I think this is the generation uh, where we will see the wheat growing with the tears, an age where Isaiah Pro prophesied about it and this word is coming to pass. Yes, the secular world is birthing out the new, but I believe that God now has willed the body of Christ, willed the church in, in, in a kind of spiritual maternity room. He has induced labor and we're in the middle of in, in, inducing labor and we are going to see one of the most uh, uh, amazing in times of innovation where we're going to innovate new models. And on a personal level, um, I'm working with some talented individuals on many, many different, um, many, many different platforms for us 
to participate in the things that God is doing. One of the things that Winston Churchill said, history shall be kind to me because I intend to do it. So whatever God has challenged you to do, whatever God has called you to do, I decree and declare you're going to do it. You're going to do it in the timetable that God has established. Mother Teresa helped the indigent in the time that she was here. Stephen Jobs developed technology in the time he was here. We see Martin Luther King um, uh, just just pushing for equality in the time that he was here. Uh, William Shakespeare, uh, he, he wrote poetry and plays in the time that he was here. Uh, King Solomon developed a robust kingdom in the time he was here. And, and, and we see nothing but innovators from Uzziah to Noah to Bezalel to Eliab. They were great innovators. They were great uh, thinkers and change agents and agents of change as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. I'm on number 25. We're going to see a rise of innovation. You are next in line. And line. And even as Noah defied statistics, even as he refused to be distracted, the Bible said those are the times that we are living in, the days that, that, that characterize Noah's days. And in that day, he became a trailblazer. He became a history maker because he moved in the realm of faith as it is in the natural so it is in the spirit as it was in Noah's days so it shall be in our days Noah had to choose whether to listen to pop culture or to God and he chose to believe God to hear God and ultimately God showed him the unlimited possibilities that lie ahead of him and so in this season I am challenging you I'm challenging you to see yourself as the solution to world problems problems to rise up and take your place amongst the great using these tools, using these um, suggestions, these principles that we have given because you, my brother and sister, are next. God bless you. This has been a production of the Awakening Podcast Network. Jennifer LeClaire is the founder and owner of APN. Our heart is to inspire people and exalt Jesus with every broadcast. We're grateful for our advertisers and supporters that make these podcasts possible.